This portion is brought to you by B VA Bootcamp. So, what is the VA Bootcamp, as you say? Well, this is an online course and coaching program to help get you your first online gig. It contains all the lessons, best practices, and guidance and coaching to help you be successful online. Over a thousand video lessons, most of the clips centered on following topics like data entry, one of the main skills needed to be a virtual assistant, transcription, email management, calendar management, internet research, social media marketing, very important on Facebook and other social media platforms and search on engine optimization. So enroll now. Here's the link. It's also found on the description box for you to click. Thank you. Welcome to Reddit Stories featuring one of the newest, well, maybe new-ish uh, subreddits that I've discovered that is surviving infidelity. So after I discovered that I cannot uh, share screen uh, PowerPoint presentations on, on my laptop using uh, StreamYard, I have to go back to recording stuff again. So yeah, hopefully, um, I, if ever I would be streaming, live streaming Reddit stories, I might do it directly using the site, although I don't think Reddit would like it that way based on some of the Reddit stories that you have come across here. So let's get started. <clears throat> this one, it is tagged as need support. So you can tell that this subreddit has several sections that either needed support, posting updates, and finally recovered from the separation. More into that later. So for one story that needed support, obviously advice, you're, all, you're free to post some of your advice at the end of uh, the clip right after watching this part. This story is by Stereotypicalories. First time poster here. I can see that the typos are here and then here. So yeah, we might try to ignore that a little later since the story will reveal anyway. My husband and I have, okay, start. My husband and I have only been married shortly over a year. I was a few months pregnant with his child when we got married and not why we got married, just a coincidence. I can pinpoint when things started to feel incredibly, noticeably different and just crappy in our relationship. Shortly before our first anniversary, I noticed he was significantly more withdrawn about a month or so before our anniversary which was now three months ago, always task or chore focused when at home, not too interested in spending much time with me or being affectionate, despite us not seeing each other much due to our regularly 45 to 50 hour work weeks. He's always been notoriously late for everything, but it had gotten to the point where he just had no response as to why he was constantly getting out so late but had no OT or overtime in his paycheck to show for it. I noticed he was on his phone much more often and never let it out in the open. If he did, he wore his Apple Watch so the notifications wouldn't pop up on his phone. I had found out that he was texting some girl from his work. He deleted everything and wouldn't show me messages, but told me that they did have an inappropriate working relationship. I was a clown and still gave him another opportunity to get crap right. He refused to transfer out of his location so he wouldn't work with her, but he did agree to marriage counseling, which we went to for about two, two and a half months or so, one meeting a week or every week and a half or so. Long story short, his suspicious behavior picked back up. He was being nasty with me again. He was constantly gone hours after his end time at work with nothing, nothing to say for himself and would constantly get defensive no matter what I asked. One night when he decided not to not come home after being out one night, 
I randomly decided to check his work bag, something I never do. I found the recent love note from the same girl that he swore he ended things with. He's on our mutual friend's phone plan and our friend had informed me that he made an outgoing call minutes after he left our house one night to a number I wasn't familiar with. I looked up the number on white pages to discover it was that girl's number. I called him, flipped out and packed his clothes and toiletries in garbage bags and threw them outside. He still continued to deny everything and continued to tell me that I'm crazy and I'm wrong and haven't proven anything. He went to his parents' house that evening and I guess talked with them for a few hours. He came by the next morning, deciding he was finally going to tell me the entire truth. He admits that he's been sleeping with this girl for months before we even had our first anniversary. Not even just that, but he has serious feelings for her. The cherry on top of all of this is that I had forgiven him for that. I wanted a temporary separation so he could get his stuff together so that maybe we could have a slight chance of recovering from this. I had him come back over later that evening after he finished work to discuss what's next. I was in the middle of telling him my hard and fast boundaries that I would be setting should he get his stuff together and give it one more shot. One of the most important things for me was that he was to call this girl and break things off with her, but he had to do it in my presence. He refused. Why? He claimed it was effed up to do that and that it would hurt his feelings. I threw my rings at him at that point and told him to get the F out and that it's over. I was done with the chances. Fast forward through that drama and here I am now, just three days later from that night. To add insult to injury, I knew this girl. She knows me, knows we're married, knows we have a young baby, everything. She did this intentionally. I confronted her the first time around about having an inappropriate working relationship with my husband. Of course, after railing him into him about it, she insisted back then that she meant no harm, uh, just needed a friend, etc. Now he was sleeping with my husband and hiding it just like he was. I'm absolutely just effing disgusted. I'm heartbroken. I'm angry, sad, frustrated. I feel the worst for our sweet baby daughter who knows nothing of what's going on. But he hasn't seen her since yesterday morning and refuses to do so since my dad came up to visit. He refuses to face my parents, refuses to face his parents, and is trying to make me feel bad for the fact that he's sleeping in his car and living out of trash bags, despite his parents allowing him to come home temporarily to get his stuff together. They're incredibly disappointed and equally as disgusted. I told him I do not feel bad for his pity parties because this has all been a choice, including his current living arrangement. He has the option to go to his parents' house and have a place to stay, but won't because he won't man up and face them. He won't come see our daughter because he doesn't want to man up and face my dad. He's just an absolute effing disgrace. At this point, the sadness has turned into resentment and anger. I'm ready to find a good attorney and rid him from my life, not our daughters. I just don't know where it all went wrong. We used to have the perfect relationship. Even after being married, even after the baby, we were still okay. I don't know what changed. I want to move on, but I can't help but feel so effing lost and betrayed. Sorry for the long ass venting. It just all has to come out now. At this point, I'm just looking for support and reassurance. Okay, so before I have my thoughts, here's what I've been mentioning a while ago about some of the reactions. So according to the auto moderator of the Surviving Infidelity subreddit, Surviving Infidelity is a support sub. Please read the rules and guidelines in our sub wiki before commenting. 
abuse, shaming, sexism, and encouraging violence, revenge are not tolerated here. If your only advice is divorce, dump them, or your SO sucks, or grow a backbone, then please don't comment. This is a sub for deeper support and discussion. Okay. As a reminder, Surviving Fidelity subreddit also has a public chat. As an active member, get more personal, faster responses when you are looking for more immediate help. Discussions focus on overcoming the challenges of going through infidelity and the recovery after. We have lots of supportive, active members who are there to help. Be kind and remember your etiquette. And at least that post admitted being a bot and this action was performed automatically for any uh, new posts. Okay, so here's the comment that we have. Um, the guilt trip might be part of the plan because uh, based on your story, your estranged husband, sort of estranged husband, is more willing to stage a pity party than to admit any wrongdoing because he will not face his parents and at least come clean with what really he really did and then as much as he wanted to see your daughter he can't because he can't face your dad and the part about divorce well I can't blame if you really had to do it that way because it's it has gotten to a stalemate. Uh, it's like you have your boundaries. He, he has his boundaries. It's like it's like all or nothing at this point. That if you let the court decide about the divorce proceedings and who gets what, then yeah, might as well do it because. If you're just willing to get him out of your life, but not out of your daughter's life, then frankly, you, you will still be seeing him, but only uh, because he has to visit your daughter. But if he even comes up with excuses or he comes up with reasons not to see your daughter, then yeah you need to tell the court that as well. You need to be transparent with the court and also with your lawyer, of course, so that uh, your lawyer would have an idea what to do with uh, your case. Um, it would be hard. It, something might blow up on your face that you will not like because you were not transparent enough. Uh, anyway, back to the story at hand. You don't have to feel bad, okay? It's not your fault. When it comes to infidelity, Whatever your shortcomings are, it's still not reason enough uh, for your husband to cheat on you. So don't fall into the trap of making you feel guilty for pushing him into infidelity, okay? That's my advice I'd be posting here. So next story, uh, yeah. This one is tagged as advice, obviously. Um, someone tagging as advice. And the way I screenshot this story by in desperate need of the of the of the advice that might be the reason for the tag um i had to chop it up to make sure that it's still readable because if i ended up screenshotting the whole thing the whole thing it <laughs> would end up with a wall of text anyway so he starts he or she starts not sure if this is the right place to post this since my situation is very different from others but I am desperate. My wife and I have been together for 25 years, but married for 19. We are high school sweethearts and have two amazing kids, a daughter and a son. I was honestly under the impression that we had a solid marriage, that our relationship wouldn't be like our friends and colleagues, and would actually stand the test of time. Now I see how spectacularly naive and wrong I was. Quick note you notice that this time it's the husband or another marriage, but it's the husband's turn to share his story. Anyway, going back to the story, my wife has been a stay-at-home mom for most of our adult lives, something we both agreed. But after our kids went to college, she began feeling restless. Emptiness syndrome, I guess. She would tell me she was feeling unfulfilled 
and felt like she had lost sense of who she was. I tried recommending hobbies we could do together, places we could visit, or even adopting puppies if that would help. And at first, she was for all of it, but soon began saying she wanted to feel like she was contributing and not simply coasting through life. I understood and was willing to support her. She never liked sitting still, so I kind of expected it. She complained to a few friends, and one of them actually managed to get her an interview at a real estate firm. She used to work in one before having the kids, and I was just as excited as she was when she accepted. In the beginning, things were going great, but after the first year, I noticed some changes. She started going to drink-ups with co-workers, began texting a lot more than usual at home and at odd hours at night. She even started wearing a particular type of perfume and would wear more suggestive clothing. Nothing too revealing or, <clears throat> I'm not saying that word, but clothing that complemented her body figure a lot more than usual. But what made me suspicious was when I accidentally saw a message from a male coworker on her phone wasn't snooping, which seemed to be highly inappropriate and flirtatious. I asked about it, and I could tell she was slightly shaken, but assured me he was simply a friend, and she would talk to him about his inappropriate messages. Me not wanting to be the paranoid, jealous, and controlling husband chose to believe her and let it go. Oh, how I wish I didn't. Her behavior got more strange as time went on. She started mentioning how she wanted to be more spontaneous with life, and even picked up smoking weed. I made jokes about how she seemed to be living the same college lifestyle as our kids and suggested she slow down. But she dropped an absolute boom when she mentioned in a drunken state after another night of going out that maybe I dim her lights and hold her back. I was completely blindsided by this and really believed I was messing up somehow, so I tried to do everything to improve the marriage. Even booked counseling, but it went nowhere. Then out of the blue, that strange behavior stopped. My wife apologized for the way she had acted. She said it was like she forgot who she was, but realized she, what she had at home and knew she didn't want to lose it. She resigned from her job and we began marriage counseling. It was tough initially, but things improved immensely. And for the two years, our marriage was better than ever. She was more attentive, she initiated intimacy more, and would shower me with affection. The only problem is that her relationship with our daughter seemed to be in a nosedive. I would question my wife about it, and she would tell me it was just a growing phase or a woman thing, and once again, I would take her word for it. Funny thing is, during this period, my relationship with my daughter improved. She would call a lot more meet me for coffee or lunch often during the week and even bought me gifts or t-shirts and stuff. I always told her it wasn't necessary, but she insisted, and I could always tell she wanted to say something but would hold her tongue. Trage tragedy stuck one evening as my wife was returning from doing groceries and she was hit by a drunk driver. She unfortunately lost the use of legs has been wheelchair bound ever since. Things got really bad and she would make suggestions of about me sleeping with other women to which I obviously refused. I just choked it up to her depression and reminded her that I was here to stay because I loved her more than our situation. This actually made her cry and ask me why I was so good to her or what did she do to deserve me. Again, I choked it up to depression and just tried to help me as best as I can. Sometime later, we went for our medical checkups. The doctor sat us down to inform us that they found a mass in my wife's throat. It was of an unusual size, and because it may be cancerous, they have to do a biopsy. My first reaction was shock, whereas my wife was just blank at first, then she started laughing. It started small, then became hysterical as she began as she began mumbling that this was her punishment. We managed to calm her down, but she requested that before the biopsy, we could do a family dinner. 
I, of course, agreed, and we had our kids and immediate family over. I made a speech about how my wife was the light of my life and how we'd get through this, but at the end of my speech, I noticed my daughter was rather uncomfortable. I thought that maybe it was because of what was going on that made her feel that way. The next evening, my daughter phoned me drunk, begging me not to hate her. At first, I was confused, but reassured her that I would never hate her because she's my little girl and I will always love her. Those words, she goes on to tell me how she caught her mother cheating on me with a man she had never seen before. It was during her, I mean my wife's, time at the real estate firm and my daughter gone on a road trip with some friends and decided to pass by at dinner. They don't normally frequent to get a bit. And that's where she saw her mother lip locked with a man that's nothing like me. Apparently, this was why her relationship, that's their relationship deteriorated and ours improved. I confronted my wife and to her credit, she didn't deny it. Through tears, she confirmed it was the co-worker from the messages and says it was the dumbest thing she has ever done. She said he was always coming on to her and eventually wore down her walls. She tells me getting caught by our daughter made her realize the gravity of what she was doing. She wanted to take it to the grave because she never wanted to hurt me and was too much of a coward to confess, so she begged our child not to tell me. I am absolutely shattered at the revelation and I don't know what to do. I now question every aspect of our relationship and wonder where I went wrong. She tells me I was a good husband and that none of this is on me. The problem is since that time, I haven't been loving towards her. I still take care of her, but it's more like a nurse does with a patient rather than a husband to his wife. If I leave her, she will be completely stranded. She's dependent of me both financially and emotionally and it seems immensely unfair. Sorry if it seems all over the place, but I am a mess right now. Okay. <clears throat> I have read the, the pieces of advice uh, commented under this uh, story. And I can sense that they have noticed that there's just pity. There's no love left, just pity. Like she feels bad for her that, or he feels bad for her that if he left her, she'd be destitute. There would be no one else to take care of her because whenever the spouse is sick, it's always the other spouse or the healthier spouse expected to take care of her. Um, and it doesn't feel so comforting anymore. It's like, I don't always agree that she would rather, no, the husband would rather outsource the caretaking of the wife to a caregiver. So much care out there that he would rather hire a caregiver or a private nurse because it's hard to trust someone who's not part of the family. On the other hand, She's part of the family. She's the wife, and she broke. She broke the trust that bonded the couple together. So he was upfront in admitting that he was a mess at this moment. On the other hand, if not seeing her would give him some some closure, or at least it would help him clear his mind. It's hard to decide on whether you wanted to leave your wife or leave your husband when you feel obligated to take care of her. On the other hand, yeah, I'm, I'm just giving out this advice since I live in a country where there is no divorce. I live in one of the last countries that still does not have divorce laws, so... I cannot always uh, recommend divorce. I cannot recommend annulment either. 
that's for another video, I suppose. It's, it's really a complicated thing. And I'm not supposed to be giving advice about marriage. Maybe on my end, I can give advice based on relationships that I've had in the past, wherein sometimes you just stay in a relationship because you feel bad about all of those years you've been together. You feel bad that um, something bad might happen to the other person if you leave him or her. And in this case, if we go back to the story of that we just read, if he just feels bad for her, then maybe for the meantime, he would hire a caregiver to take care of her. At least uh, he's still spending on her technically. And then once he's ready to think it over, if he wanted to really leave her for good and assure his daughter that he doesn't hate the daughter, then yeah, it'd be fine because it's, it's about time that he started looking over his daughter now because she obviously needed the, the moral support. It messed her up because she got pushed into keeping the secret and risk hurting her dad in the process. So yeah, that's how I would view it. Like try it out, get, get a caregiver for the meantime. And then if you still wanted to leave her, then yeah, go for it. Maybe she, or maybe he, the husband should stop feeling bad about all those years that they were together. It's like, that's not his fault. For every infidelity that happened, as I've mentioned in the previous story, never blame the part, never blame the partner that got cheated upon, okay? So let's move on to the next story. Okay, this is another <laughs> screenshot I made uh, that I had to chop because I think this ended up becoming a long ass paragraph. So here we go. And this is tagged as rant. So if they needed advice, they would mention at the end of the story anyway. So here we go. Story by PX Mick. Or Pix Mick. My now ex and I have been dating for three years as of October 21st. Guess she wanted to celebrate her anniversary by cheating. Her and I lived together for about a year and about two months before we were going to renew our lease, she decided she wants to join the National Guard. Being her boyfriend, I supported her, of course. Unfortunately, that meant I had to quit my good paying job and move ours away. A little backstory. I moved away from my parents to be with this girl. Don't judge me. So I was on my own without her. I don't have much work experience and I didn't have my, fig my career figured out yet. Thankfully, I got a good paying job right after I moved there, so I was pretty comfortable. Knowing this job I got was not easy to come by. I was worried about moving and barely scraping by in a new area. Going back to the story, I decided to move back home and try long distance first. Well, really, second mistake. Caught her kind of flirting with her ex at one point, like a fool I believed it was nothing. So our lease ended. I moved home and she moved in with her parents. Fast forward two months. She's having problems with her family and I'm having trouble finding a good enough job that pays enough for me to visit her, but I'm hopeful. Again, I got the feeling she was cheating. Confronted her as any worried partner should and it got dismissed. Third and final mistake. Mm. Lately, in the past month, she's been very distant with me, saying she was busy with her family. And she hasn't been acting the same while talking to me. She says it's stress and this, that, and the third. And eventually, it comes to us talking about breaking up or a break. I opposed not to break. If we're breaking up, we're breaking up. Rattles. I didn't want to play this on or off game. We talked and decided to stay together. And she was going to come visit me within the next week of this post. 
She had military training to go, which is fine. I didn't think anything about it. I sent her home some Snapchats of her cat. It stays with me. And texted my goodnights. And happy sweet rainbows and unicorns wishing her luck on her training. She read it. Then replied about 9.30 p.m. I woke up this morning of about 5 a.m. And I see she replied to my Snapchat or some sort of fair carnival sign that it said she sent it at 12 a.m. Um, weird. I thought she, had, she went to bed. I got that gut feeling something was off, but I didn't want to snoop on her account. Eventually, I came to the point of where I needed to see what's going on. I signed into her Snapchat to find her sending videos and pictures to some guy in an address she told me was her recruiter's place. He lets people rent out for training. She's been talking to this guy for about a month, which adds up to why she was being acting weird with me. Talking to him before we even discussed breaking up, but that doesn't matter at this point. Which brings us now to the present and me feeling like a fool and how I shouldn't have trusted my gut the first time. She was every bit of loving to me un up until the last couple of weeks, so as I tell everyone, she was unfaithful. It comes to a shock. I'm sure a lot of people are feeling what I'm feeling. Anger, sadness, hopelessness, and everything else I could possibly feel. I texted her. I saw what I saw, and that's all I said. She still hasn't replied, but part of me doesn't want her to. I don't want to hear her excuse or apologies because at the end of the day, there is no reason or excuse to cheat on your partner. Be an adult and handle it before it gets to that point. Another part of me is hoping she answers so I can see if she feels any regret or if she's not going to be faced by it and brush it off like I'm nothing to her. I'm sorry for those who feel this and just know it's never your fault. I'm not blaming myself for her doing what she did. Just disappointed that it happened. I don't talk to any other girls because I'm not good with them. So I'm just going to try to drown myself in making myself better and talk about my situation for my own sake. Thank you for reading this. I know it'll get better. Okay, I think that obviously confirmed what I speculated at the beginning they just wanted to rant and some moral support so dude you can you can survive this hang on you will always have support especially once your common set of friends or everyone else that is close to your familiar to what happened uh, realize realize what's really going on yeah you discover who your friends are who your real friends are, who deserves your friendship, who would end up forming your support group. It's just sad that uh, bad things had to happen first before you discover who your true friends are. So next uh, story here. Uh, this is another story that I got confused. What's oh, really the gender of the people uh, mentioned here? Uh, this is by Nikita. I know it's a female name, but who knows um, how many, how unisex that name is. Yeah. So, I, I lost the fake heaven and found the real me. Um, and this is a post-separation story. So, to start, why am I so sad to have lost the version of my ex, WW, that actually never existed? I know in my bones that she was an illusion. Had I known that people with no conscience truly existed, I would have seen she was one of them. But I didn't believe in ghosts, in God, nor in humans with no conscience. So I always patched up her flaws by projecting my own conscience onto her glaring lack of judgment. I always explained away her inexplicable behaviors by rationalizing them and assuming she meant well, she didn't even have to explain herself. I would just do the work for her. When she cheated on me, I tried to explain it away. I twisted and turned like the devil in holy water, torturing myself to inject somewhere in the nightmare 
I was living some explanation that would convince me that she had a conscience, but I failed. I was left with the terrifying realization that she was different. She was terribly different from me. She was scaring me. I felt so horrified by the wool that was painfully lifted from my eyes. I felt like my flesh was being shredded by vultures each time I'd think back to all the warning signs I had glossed over in the past. I didn't want to believe that people like that existed, let alone that I had slept every night for 13 years next to someone like that. I felt this cold shiver behind my neck as if I had narrowly missed being hit by a bus and almost died. How could I have been in such danger for so long while feeling so safe? I had no idea that my pr precious and fragile mental health, which I thought indestructible before that point, was in this monster's hands all along, just waiting to be crushed with such ease and cruelty. Thinking back to how we met, I always fell for people who were hard to get. I always had to work for people's love and attention. If they just selflessly and naturally loved me, it was too easy. I needed to feel like I had to work hard in order to, preserve, to deserve it. For it to be worth anything and to guarantee that I would grow as a person throughout the relationship because they would challenge me. But I was wrong. I was only trying to fix the lack of love that my dad had always had for me. I had worked all my life to keep my dad happy. I always had to please him and walk on eggshells to make sure he shouldn't stop loving me. I thought that's what's true and worthy unconditional love was. So when I found my wife and she wanted to get married to me, I thought I had finally fixed the problem. I had found someone who was unavailable emotionally and with my love, I had turned her into someone who actually truly loved me. I had fixed my age old daddy issues, I had turned a lukewarm woman into a loving wife. I was finally worth loving. But I was repeating history. She was a narcissist. She had love bombed me. She made me believe she truly loved me. And I was so desperate to believe it that I could never, ever let myself believe otherwise ever again. I could not ever accept that I had not fixed my daddy issues. This was a life or death situation. So when the devaluation phase of the narcissistic abuse started, my priority was to maintain the fantasy at all costs. I wasn't aware I was doing that at the time, but now I know. And when the discard phase of the narcissistic abuse happened on discovery day one, the whole construct of my happiness came crashing down. The fact that I was unlovable and empty inside came rushing back. I fell into hell and thought I was going to die. Had I really worked this hard for a decade on my marriage just to fall back to square one as a middle-aged woman? Was all this happiness I had experienced just an illusion? I couldn't tolerate it. I had to have freed myself from my childhood nightmare. But now that my wife had destroyed everything, how was I ever going to go back to that blissful state? It was over. My life was over. At 38 years old, I am finally addressing my CPTSD from being raised by a narcissist and living 13 years with a narcissist wife. It's nowhere as euphoric as I felt during my marriage when I, had, when I thought I had found my soulmate. But I feel like this time, I have a genuine chance at finding true love. I value kindness now. I am not impressed by the bad boy, bad girl type anymore. I don't care about physical appearance as much as I care about empathy. I wish you all peace of heart and mind in your recovery. Yeah, we wish you peace and happiness in your recovery as well because it really seemed like the love that you failed to find in your own father, you tried to seek in other people. So I'm not yet a parent, but if you are a parent, and you realize that your child is trying to find love elsewhere. 
you might try to reconnect your bond with your child and try to rediscover them more. You'd be surprised. Okay, so here, this is tagged as progress, yeah. Hopefully this would be one of the ones that had a good ending, or maybe it did, because I already read it before I posted it here. So story by TechRat underscore seven. To start, hello all, strap in because this is a long one. I'd like to share a story of how I moved on from my cheating ex-GF's infidelity. Hopefully it can encourage you in your way forward. After my ex, who we'll call Mary, had cheated on me and left for another guy at her school, I was depressed for a while. But then at the advice of my friend Tommy, a fake name, I started working out more, devoting more time to my studies, going to my martial arts club more. Needless to say, her being gone honestly opened a lot more doors in my life. I'm about to graduate with honors in a field that I love and is in high demand. I'm getting better at my martial arts. My confidence has risen to a level I never even realized I developed a backbone. Earlier this week, my friends and I, along with Tommy, decided to get pizza at our favorite spot after we saw a movie. Theaters opened in our area. While we were enjoying our food, laughing, smiling, I thought I'd never see the day. Mary had approached our table and spoke to me. To keep it short, in front of my friends, she asked if we could ever keep in contact and maybe give our relationship another shot. Let I, mind you. She cheated on me during the time I was mourning the death of a close cousin of mine. Tom interluded, stating that I shouldn't even be giving her the time of the day, right in front of her. Listening to Tommy, then and there, I simply told her that ship has sailed a long time ago, that if you loved me, you wouldn't go behind my back while I was mourning. All the while not taking a day to rest, working my butt off in my studies in a dead-end job that I hated. The guy she cheated with ended up being a real jerk. I told her, good luck in the future, but I'll never get back with her. She covered her eyes, ready to cry but I honestly felt nothing. Tommy asked her to leave our table. The two girls in our group weren't too fond of her either. Tommy let them in on who Mary was, and that was that. In the end, I'm in the best shape of my life. Have a six-figure job lined up once I graduate. My friends are pretty much a second family to me. Though I'm single, there's a girl that I've known who recently asked me out, so life's pretty darn good. In a weird way, getting cheated on and dumped helped me reach a potential I didn't think I had. Edit. Thanks for the awards. Yeah, good on you. Sometimes a breakup happens for us to realize the kind of potential that we have. It's like, maybe if you're Filipino, you're familiar with the movie One More Chance where someone had to break off a relationship in order to find time to grow her career. Well, it, the lead character in that movie is a female, so it might be a little different with the story, but it has the same, it has the same analogy. Uh, a breakup happens for the career to flourish. And, and don't worry, the other guy in the movie also had a flourished career after the breakup. So... That's the only similarity that they had. It's like, in this story though, he got cheated on. They ended the relationship and he found more time with his career. Well, more like with his studies and with self-development. Because most of the time, the best way to distract ourselves from a bad breakup was by getting preoccupied with more productive things. It just happened that hopefully most of us don't get into self-development issues or immerse ourselves in improving ourselves just, just after a breakup. Or, well, a breakup doesn't have to happen for you to improve yourselves. Everyone has a potential that 
deserve to be explored and nurtured. So we came to the end of our video. Thank you very much for staying. And hopefully I will be sharing more stories from the subreddit of surviving infidelity since either they needed advice or they just wanted to share how happy they are in progressing after the breakup, which is basically the point anyway of the subreddit. Thank you and have a good evening. See you on the next video. Bye-bye.